In this video, we're going to apply the skill we learned from the video on the single swap rule and show how we can use it to draw the enantiomer of pretty much any chiral compound. Okay, so what I've done here is I've drawn out a very, very, very simple chiral compound. This, this is one, two, three, four. This is R uh, two chlorobutane. And let's say you're asked to draw the enantiomer of R two chlorobutane. So you need to draw S two chlorobutane. So how would you draw the enantiomer of this? Well, you could try to draw this molecule out. You could try to draw its mirror image, right? You could align it so that you could you could show the fact that you've got a mirror plane. Now that's one way to do it. And you'll find it's actually a very lengthy process to in order to be able to do that. The simplest way to be able to do this and this doesn't take really very much time at all, is you just basically do a single swap or inversion of the stereo center. And here is our stereo center right here. It's on carbon number two. And we're gonna basically invert any two groups. So for example, the most convenient would be chlorine and hydrogen. So we can just basically say chlorine, which is a, here it's a wedge, and H is a dash. So chlorine's coming out of the page at us, H is going back into the page. And so we can basically just invert their positions so that one hydrogen is actually pointing out of the page, the hydrogen's now pointing out of the page and the chlorine's facing in back. And if you figure out R and S here, you'll know that this is the S stereocenter. And that is the enantiomer. Uh, you don't have to draw uh, to show the mirror plane that, that these two molecules are, are mirror images of each other. Just the fact that one is R and this is S to chlorobutane makes them enantiomers. So it's a really, it's actually a really simple trick. Now, so the key thing is just to be able to recognize stereocenters when you see them. So let's draw out another example of a chiral molecule that might have a few more stereocenters. So let's say that we've got uh, something like this. So OH, and then we've got an NH2. And let's say there's, there's a methyl group here. And um, then there's a, uh, well, let's just keep it like that. Okay, so the key point is simply to be able to recognize the stereocenters in this molecule. Uh, looking at this, we've got um, no stereocenters here. There was, these are all these all have CH two here, and um, this carbon here is also not a stereocenter because it's attached to identical groups, right? Along this axis here, we there's no difference between the two. Now here's a stereocenter, and here is a stereocenter. So there's an H in the back, and there's now an H in the front, and this is also a stereocenter. So H, CH3, cyclohexane, and this carbon, this is a stereocenter. NH2, H, a carbon with a CH3 and a CH2, this is clearly a stereocenter. And finally, on the end here, this carbon that's attached to the OH, the H, CH3, and a CH2, it's also clearly a stereocenter. So if we want to draw the enantiomer of this, so we just basically do a swap. Now I shouldn't, I shouldn't have maybe used um, the reaction error. It's not really a reaction here. We're, we're just doing a mental exercise. We just want to swap uh, the stereocenters here. So we're gonna have to swap, swap all stereocenters to make the enantiomer. That's the key part. So for example, if this is um, this is R and then uh, S and then R, our stereo our enantiomer is gonna have to be SRS. Okay, so we do that by swapping all the different stereo centers. So that would mean that our first stereo center, we can just swap the CH3 and the H. So we can just draw the CH3 as a dash, that's okay. You don't have to draw in the H, but you can. And the H is implied, right? It's a 
hidden or implicit hydrogen. For our next stereo center, we basically take our dashed NH2 and we make it into a wedge. So that's going to make it from make it go from from S to R. And then we have this stereo center, so we're just basically going to make our wedged OH into a dash. So that will make it go from R to S. Okay. So again, we've just by swapping each of those three stereo centers, um, you'll make the enantiomer of this molecule. And you can even do this on a molecule which looks kind of wacky. So we're going to do actually a really kind of crazy looking example, but it's the same principle. It's not going to be any more different or difficult than previous examples. So first time you see this molecule, you might think this is a very intimidating looking molecule. And certainly, if you haven't seen this before, it certainly would be. But Every, we can draw the enantiomer of this molecule pretty easily through just remembering that every stereocenter we're going to swap two groups. So if you look at if everything where, where we have a dash or a wedge here, so here, 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 and here. You need to double check to make sure. I mean, just because there's a dash or which doesn't always mean there's a stereo center, but in this case, there, that is the case. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stereo centers. So I'm just gonna do one or two stereo centers here to just get the flavor, but we could very actually easily draw the enantiomer of this molecule. This is, again, this is oxytocin oxytocin, very important peptide hormone involved in childbirth. So uh, we could simply just take all of our, our dashes and turn them into wedges. Um, and take all of our wedges and turn them into dashes. So, and dash wedge. So did I miss anything? I don't think so. So that is what the enantiomer of oxytocin would look like. We're basically just doing single swaps on every single stereo center. Um, so yeah, single swap on all stereo centers. Now if we only did eight out of the nine or seven out of the nine or or if we even only switched one, okay, it would be a stereo center, but it it would be a stereo isomer, sorry, but it would not be an enantiomer. It would be what we call a diastereomer. So you have to watch out for that. So you know if if you've got multiple stereo centers and you only flip one, it's gonna be a diastereomer. Okay, so last example uh, on this and just want to make sure that you're clear on this last piece of information. So let's say you have a molecule which has two stereo centers and we'll draw it out like this. CH3. So here's a molecule. It's got two stereo centers, right? It's got stereo center on the left and a stereo center on the right because this carbon is attached to an H, CH3, CH2, and then a CH3. Whereas on this side, it's attached to a CH2 and a CH2, so it's different. And the same thing goes here. These are two different stereo centers. Now, you might think that if you wanted to draw, if you're asked to draw the enantiomer of this compound, that you might blindly just swap all the stereo centers like this. And actually, this is not the enantiomer. Or it's not an enantiomer of the molecule on the left. Why not? Well, if you look closely at this molecule on the left, the one thing should stand out. And this is the fact this molecule has a mirror plane. So in other words, 
this area on the, the, the part of the molecule on the left is the exact mirror image of the part of the molecule on the right. So it is actually not, it's not a chiral molecule. Okay, it is, which is to say that it is super imposable on its mirror image. And an example of its mirror image is over here. I mean, these two molecules, they are mirror images of each other. But because this molecule has a mirror plane, it's not a chiral molecule. These two molecules are mirror images, but they are actually the same molecule. Okay. These, these are the same molecule okay it's you know it's kind of like if you had a, 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 a dining room table and you were to draw the mirror image of that dining room table you know it would still exactly uh, exact or well, maybe a better example start with like the letter E right you draw a mirror image of the letter E it looks like that but the letter E on the left is actually it is the mirror image of the of the E on the right but we could rotate this 180 degrees and they would be superimposable. And in chemistry, if two molecules are superimposable, we are they are therefore the same. Okay. So just again, simple rule on how to figure out um, how to figure out how to draw the enantiomer of a compound. So just flip the stereocenters. So uh, every stereocenter has to get flipped. The only thing to watch out for is cases where your molecule has a, a mirror image, or sorry, has a mirror plane. In that case, these are called um, meso compounds. So it's, it has, <laughs> so it has mirror plane, it has stereo centers or chiral centers, but it also has a mirror plane. So that's what we define as a meso compound. So watch out for those because the mirror images of those molecules will actually just be, it'll be this is the same molecule. So hope you found this trick useful.